And speaking of the Senate, uh, we're very happy to be joined by Alex Antic here because guess what? A staggering $124 million, it's been revealed, was funded to Labor's election victory last year with the Australian Electoral Commission uh, revealing the fact that unions were the largest contributor. $37 million went in donations, $16 million directly to the party, and over $22 million on political campaigning for the unions, paying their way to get their demands met under the Albanese government. And boy, hasn't that paid off. Let's bring in Liberal Senator Alex Antic from Ad Adelaide. Alex, um, in comparison, the Liberals and Nationals raked in a combined $181 million. Did the unions and labor, or did the unions rather get labor across the line? Well, James, it certainly doesn't hurt, does it? A little bit of coin in the till uh, is a good thing when it comes to handing out flyers and uh, you know, putting on ads on TV and presumably, uh, you know, uh, finding more time on the ABC even. That doesn't pay for it, but, you know, who knows what, what they're doing with that money. But it certainly helps. I mean, you need money to get elected. Uh, and when it comes to that last campaign, the old adage is, um, at some point, you've got to pay the piper. And uh, I think we've seen that straight off the bat, frankly. I, we saw it through uh, some pretty pretty drastic IR reforms, through uh, multi-employer bargaining that they pushed through the Senate um, just before uh, before Christmas. And that's the reality for the Australian people. When, when you vote Labor, you vote unions. And, uh, you know, if you want the CMF, CFMEU running the country... Uh, then that's what you're going to get because they have more than got their uh, hands all over the ALP. And we can see that through these returns. Well, buckle up Australia if that's the case. But the top donors to the Teal's Climate 200 political movement have also been revealed. And they include software top dog Scott Farker and Mike Cannon Brooks, who together spent over $2.6 million to boot out the Morrison government uh, in some of those Teal seats. What do you make of that? Look, I mean, I just think it's a, it's, a, it's a new front, isn't it? I mean, it's a, it's a new way of doing elections, and that is dressing up uh, what look to be independents as left-wing candidates. And, and, and we're seeing that across the board, and it's been used very effectively. The message really has to be for the Australian people, you have to know what you're buying. And when you're, when you're voting for teal candidates, you are voting for green left candidates, effectively. And, and, and that is a simply uh, replicated uh, throughout the country. We've got some here that are funded in, in SA. I think the, uh, the member for Mayo had, had a significant contribution from Climate 200, uh, and that's been rolled out across the board. So, look, I mean, you'll get all sorts of arguments about political donations. Ultimately, people are allowed to support who they want to support, but people only find this stuff out after the event. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it should be of no surprise in future. Wouldn't it be great if there was some sort of real-time donations reporting system where week by week through the campaign we could see who was giving all this money out? But anyway, moving on, the Future Fund uh, has warned governments to stay in their lane when it comes to instructing the $196 billion fund where to put its money and the money of those who rely on it for their retirement following uh, Jim Chalmers' calls for companies to essentially invest in government programs and, well, what's basically corporatism or socialism, depending on how you want to call it. Alex, uh, money and politics just shouldn't go hand in hand like they're proposing, should they? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I think they, they, they probably shouldn't. I mean, the Future Fund was a, a great initiative, a great idea. Um, but look, I, I think we're all a bit troubled by the concept of, of governments determining, uh, you know, everything about spending. We're seeing so much more of it. You know, I, I often say um, that I, I love it and I use it too often, the old uh, Margaret Thatcher line that communism never sleeps, it never loses focus of its objectives and neither should we. When you get government spending big money, you get that that return. I think we're seeing the the slow creep across the planet, but certainly in Australia, of the return of socialism and in a form of communism, even if you like, uh, coming through. So, look, uh, keep big government away from me. Our bureaucracies are too big. Our government spending is too much. Um, you know, we've got to get back to lean and mean at some point. Yeah, well, I suspect the new slogan is going to be never stand between Jim Chalmers and a bucket of superannuation money. But anyway, Alex Antic, Senator from South Australia, thank you so much for your time.